Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the corner rounding end mill and uh, how to use it. Um, corner rounding end mill is a quick and, quick and easy way to put a, a radius on the corners of a part. Um, your alternatives are to belt sand them or uh, file them or set up on a rotary table and mill them. But that's, it doesn't, first of all, the, the belt sanding and filing doesn't produce a very accurate radi radii. So if you, if you need an accurate radii, you either have to use a rotary table or you have to use one of these guys. Okay, this is a corner rounding end mill. Basically, it's a uh, a form tool. Four, this this one has four flutes. I think most of them have four flutes. They run from about a thirty second of an inch radius. This is a, this is a sixteenth. Okay, they run from a thirty second up to about three quarters of an inch. This is a half inch. It's getting pretty big. Um, they're a little expensive to buy, but. Over the years, I've, I've picked them up when, as I needed them one at a time, and now I have a pretty complete set. So, uh, there's a few things you need to know about using a, a corner rounding end mill. First thing is, uh, you always set up on the solid jaw of the vise to, to work to mill on your part. That way, if you have a part that's different dimensions, length and width, you can, as long as you always put the work off the solid jaw, you can rotate the part around and you don't have to reset your tool each time. So uh, I got a quarter inch uh, corner rounding end mill and the uh, spindle, so let's go ahead and throw some radii in this part. Make sure it's down tight on the parallels. And let me show you how to pick, pick up the uh, two surfaces here. Let's uh, change camera angles real quick. Alright, the most common mistake when using one of these end mills is to end up with a burr on one of the two surfaces by, because you went too deep with the end mill. So let me show you how to pick these up without running into that problem. Let's see, just... Okay, let's pick up the top surface first. Just run in just far enough so you get inside the diameter of the end mill and bring it up until it just scratches the surface. Okay, right about there, it just touched. I'm going to set my dial on zero, and instead of leaving it there, I'm going to back off a couple thousandths, two or three thousandths. All right? You'll never see that in the final radius, but that'll prevent you from ending up with a burr along the edge, along the edge of the cutter. Okay. So now let's do the same thing on the on the back side of the part. Let's drop it down. This way, if we go a little too deep when we're picking it up, when we leave a mark on the part. It'll go away when you when you cut the radius. This part will be milled off, so we don't we don't care if we leave a mark. So just go into you touch it a little bit. Set her dials to zero and back off back off three thousand. All right. Now, uh, these cutters work best climb milling, okay? If you have a light mill and you're afraid of climb milling, then go ahead and uh, take a rough cut conventionally and leave five or ten thousandths on it for a climb mill finish cut because they don't cut worth a darn conventional milling. They have very little clearance on the, on the cutting edge, so there's a lot of dragging going on and it leaves a really rough surface if you try to try to cut them using a conventional milling technique. So let's uh, bring our table back up to zero here. And take the cut. See, I guess you can see here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, made a nice, nice smooth radius on the corner. Okay, so now we can just work our way around. Make 
sure your parts hammered down every time. And just work your way around the part. See, as long as we're on the uh, solid jaw device, we can spin the part around however, however we like, and it will always be set right for the cutter. Take a look at it and see what we did here. Okay, we got some uh, nice radii on three of the corners there. You can see where they all come together. It's going to leave a little point. And if you want to doctor that up a little bit, you can just hit it with a file. And kind of uh, approximate a radius. Take most of it off like that and then you can just kind of work on the three sides and kind of approximate the uh, the blend it works better on small radii than big ones but take some time at it you can you make it look pretty nice and just go over and hit it with a scotch brite pad afterward and nobody will know the difference so that's it that's basically how to use a corner rounding end mill See you later.